understood that I'm talking about the post-colonial subject being essentially the formerly colonized subject. Yet, the post-colonial condition is also a global condition. It's also a condition that affects, although in completely different ways, the former colonizer. And when you look, and in a way, because of the dynamics of modern or sort of late, late colonization of the late 19th century and early 20th century, these basically 50 years, the, the process of creating this post-colonial condition in the colonizer's homeland, in the colonizing nation, has been in during this particular period. So if we do think about the chronology of the emergence of culture with Boa's work, for instance, um, then we're precisely looking at this. Culture becomes a good way of thinking, of facing the emergence of a new community in the colonizing center, where you now cannot deal with the colonized subject as simply something that exists outside. So Boas is really thinking about and using it to describe what he believes to be Native American culture that is now inside here. It cannot be that other thing that's out beyond the frontiers, a way that we can not think about. In the same way that the French are thinking about what to do with the Algerians and the Muslims in Algeria, at the moment that they are thinking that Algeria will become part of France forever. So what to do with that, right? That's the question. They are not thinking in the same, so they are writing during this period, for instance, again, in the late 19th century, early 20th century, they are writing about the, the indigenous practices of the Algerians and how to modify them and how to do this and that. But they are writing about modifying them with the urgency of the fact that they have now Piennois, or basically the French, white French born in Algeria. You don't fi you find still talk, talk about the locals and what they do, but it doesn't acquire the same urgency or even epistemological curiosity when the French are talking about Cameroon, for instance, right? Because again, they remain a little bit far. They start talking about them when they are now again facing the idea that the former colonizer metropole has changed dramatically. The emergence of the minority, and you reference the, the idea of what we call now minority communities. But the minority communities, in a way, are also a product in their current status, are also a product of the colonizing moment, of the, the colonial moment. So if we're thinking about the colonial moment, the word culture is a tool, or one could argue that it could be, or it was developed as a tool to understand the other that now became part of the self. That could not be understood as those people way out there because they are now right here. So, and I think it matches the chronology that Rebecca talked about in a way, in, in the beginning, that this is a, a useful way for white ethnographers and white historians to think about this other who became inside and cannot be completely separated anymore. Um, and to think about the self as well in ways that nation doesn't work very well. I mean, it, it sort of, it works hand in hand with defining nation, but now you can't just rely on an understood definition of nation, which is basically, yeah, in Victorian era, when you talk about yeah, the British un is understood as what, what it means, it's clear, right? But when now there are all these other people, people of color, but also women, but also all these other things that are becoming part of the definition of the nation, then now we need to define exactly what it is. And so now, yeah, these people are not exactly part of the national culture. If you want to stay here, and for women, if you want to be part of the public sphere, then you need to, uh, to be part of the culture. In the same way, I would argue, if we think about corporate culture, that, and we had um, here uh, last year um, a talk about crisis in corporate culture and how it links to theology. Uh, when we think about corporate culture, the emergence of corporate culture is also historically related to women entering the work sphere, the uh, sort of emergence of different practices, and suddenly now we're thinking about what is good corporate culture which is very masculine and you know, we, we can talk about that a lot, but it's sort of, because before that, you don't even need it. Because we're all dudes and we can just hang out and drink scotch at the end and nobody cares, but now we have all these women, what do we do with them? And then we have all these brown and black people, what do we do with them? So now we gotta introduce a new term that allows everybody to fall in line.
So this is really 